This video is brought to you by Skillshare. In this video, I wanted to talk about something that comes up a lot in the 3D community, or at least from time to time, and that is the idea that Blender is somehow a cult. It sounds a bit over the top, but if you've been around the Blender community long enough, you've probably seen some people say it. Maybe you've been in an online discussion about 3D software, and the moment someone mentions Maya or Max, a wave of Blender users jump in, arguing that Blender is superior in every single way. Maybe you've come across someone who gets way too defensive when Blender's flaws are pointed out. Or maybe you try to critique Blender yourself only to get buried under a pile of comments insisting that Blender is perfect. So where does this idea actually come from? Is it just a joke that got out of hand? Or is there some truth to it? Before we continue, if you are a beginner 3D artist, or if you have been doing 3D art for a while now, and you don't know how to monetize your 3D skills, you are not alone. Because as a 3D artist myself, I have struggled with this for a long time. That's why I'm happy to announce that we created a class outlining some of the best ways to monetize your 3D skills. In this class, I'm gonna share with you 5 methods that will help you make a living from your 3D art, at least the foundation of it. The class is now on Skillshare, and I will appreciate it a ton if you want to check it out. We will go through some obvious but overlooked stuff, and of course, some common practices. And whether you are a beginner or a seasoned 3D artist, I'm sure you will find useful things. Please check out the class and help support the channel. Also, the first 100 people to sign up using our code will get a month-long free subscription of Skillshare. The idea that Blender is a cult has been around for years, but one of the earliest and most well-known examples came from a 2008 forum post on BlenderArtist.org. Someone jokingly compared learning Blender to reaching different levels of enlightenment, describing how new users start by deleting or sacrificing the default cube, then get excited about shading and ray tracing, and eventually begin the never-ending search for the perfect render button, which is a mythical button that will somehow make everything look amazing in one click, but of course, it does not exist. The joke stuck around because it captured something real. Blender isn't the easiest software to learn, especially if you're coming from something more traditional like Maya or Max. And when you finally get comfortable with it, you feel like you've survived some kind of trial. And that sense of accomplishment naturally leads to a strong connection with the software. And for a lot of users, Blender isn't just a software. It is a tool to get them into 3D in the first place, because it is free and much more accessible. And I think that emotional attachment is a big part of why Blender's community is so passionate about the software and what they can do with it. Blender's user base isn't just large, it is intensely dedicated, which is actually a great thing. Passionate communities help software actually grow, and Blender's community is one of the main reasons why the software keeps improving. But sometimes, the enthusiasm turns into something else. If you've ever been in an online discussion about 3D tools, you might have noticed how quickly things get heated. Someone asks which software they should use, and within minutes, fans of that software jump in, saying controversial things. Generally speaking, Blender users kind of had the upper hand, I mean trash talking wise, especially after the 2.8 release, and beyond that of course. But before that update, Blender was seen as a clunky but a capable 3D software to a certain extent, mostly used by hobbyists and indie artists. However, 2.8 version changed everything. The UI got a modern overhaul, and the toolset expanded, and suddenly, Blender was competing with the industry giants. This was actually an exciting shift, but it also had a side effect. Some users stopped just loving Blender and started defending it, aggressively that is. But at the same time, why not? They have nothing to lose. It is kind of crazy, because it is a crazy situation, a great software, for free. 
one of the criticisms towards Blender fans is saying that Blender is gonna take over the world and insisting that every other software is useless whenever Blender gets a new feature, even if Blender doesn't execute that function the best. But I guess it is the excitement after all. Before we get too far down this road, let's acknowledge something. This isn't just a Blender thing. You see, the same kind of behavior is everywhere. PC versus Mac, desktop versus consoles, Nvidia versus AMD, and so on and so forth. People usually pick sides, and suddenly every discussion turns into a war about which one is actually the best. In the world of 3D, you will find heated debates like Substance Painter vs. Quixel Mixer, ZBrush vs. Blender in Sculpting, and Unreal Engine vs. Unity for game development, and other things like After Effects vs. Nuke for compositing. When it comes to design, each software has a dedicated fan base and they are religious about supporting their tools. But at some point, it stops being about the tools and turns into something personal. But most professionals don't get involved in these debates. They just see it as a comparison between some different tools that they can use and incorporate into their workflow. So they just use whatever tools they can get to get the job done. But for beginners or hobbyists who have only used Blender, it is easy to fall into the mindset that Blender is the only good option out there. And to be honest, there are actually a few reasons Blender attracts this level of passion. One big reason is that it is free. This removes the biggest barrier to entry. So people who couldn't afford Maya or Max get into 3D through Blender. And frankly, it is one of the best options out there, even if you have the money to pay for the other software. And this creates a sense of gratitude. Then there is the fact that it is open source. Unlike all the desk products, which are owned by a corporation, Blender belongs to the community. This makes people feel invested in its success, but it also makes them more defensive and more sensitive to criticism. Another reason I think is the underdog fact. For years, Blender was dismissed by professionals, and now it is gaining that respect. Some users feel like they need to fight back against all that past criticism to show that Blender is actually a capable software and can compete in the marketplace. So, is Blender a cult? Not really. It is just a software with an extremely passionate fan base. The whole cult thing was mostly a joke, but like all good jokes, there is a bit of truth to it. Mostly Blender users are just artists who enjoy the software, just like you probably. But yeah, some people can take things too far, whether it is blindly defending the software or attacking other tools for no apparent reason. But at the end of the day, Blender is a great software and the community is amazing once you start using the software and get closer to the people who use it on a daily basis. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you have something to share, please leave it in the comment section down below. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.